thanks everybody for coming out today. Really appreciate you giving up your time and being here with us today to share some of it. And I think you will have seen the agenda and it's a, you know, I expect you'll get a lot out of today. So that, that includes the people in the Vicargo guys. So I think from my perspective, I'll try and catch up as many as I can here today. Um, and if you have, I don't think there's an opportunity to ask questions as part of the session, but I'll be around today. So if anybody's got any issues they want to chat about, I'll be around. So I'll, uh, that'll be great. Okay. There we go. Earlier this year, we released a report uh, we commissioned from AgriSearch, which showed that milk produced in New Zealand had the lowest carbon footprint in the world. We're fairly unique, you know, as our outdoor pasture system, that's, that's in New Zealand here, we're very unique in the sense that our pasture system is not that common with worldwide, you know, and it, and it produces both a low carbon footprint and a very healthy environment for our animals. And, um, and so we are quite unique in, in that way. We can also be proud of our long history of being world leading in terms of our innovation and technology and farming practices. You know, and I think we've often led the world in that. And from my perspective, you know, I don't see anything changing going forward. But as you all know, we're all, all aware that we're living in a world that's changing rapidly. This slide pretty much summarised the key influences that our land and water project says will drive the future of New Zealand dairy farming. Climate change and greenhouse gas emissions were identified as having the most impact on farming. This includes the potential to disrupt food production and also an increased focus on reducing emissions. How to reduce emissions is one of our keynote sessions today. And we're pleased to have two of our climate change ambassador farmers um, here to share their views and, um, and their advice on the changes they've already started making. We'll also be hearing from Climate Change Minister James Shaw. We also see that consumer preferences and changing diets will be a big driver in the future. Along with trade and climate policy and how well we can affect and how, on how well we can affect our reputation and, um, and how that will impact on whether consumers want to trade with us and buy what we produce. If you're interested in understanding more about what consumers are seeking from farmers, you can join our workshop today on NZ Dairy competing on the global stage. If you can't make that workshop, we, also we will also be running a free webinar on this topic on the, 8th, on the, sorry, on the 6th of May. So please check your program for the details of that. Globally, consumer expectations are changing. More and more consumers expect their food to produce sustainably. And we're seeing our global competitors respond. They're all investing in becoming more efficient, just like we are. Pioneering new science and trialling and adopting new technology will be critical for us as Kiwi farmers to retain our reputation for innovation in a fast-changing world. Our Dairy NZ science team will also be hosting a science and action workshop today, which will give you an overview of the latest research into how farmers can reduce the environment, environmental impact while remaining profitable. I'm also excited that we have with us today nanotechnologist Dr Michelle Dickinson. Michelle will, will, will be sharing her thoughts on how we can use emerging science and technology to improve farming and our futures. My final message is that we live in a world of opportunity. If we look at our forecast population growth, we can see that the world's population is expected to reach 10 billion this century. As farmers, we have an opportunity to play an important role in helping feed the world's growing population 
for the high quality, safe, sustainably produced dairy. We have shown time and time again that we are in a world leading position because we do adopt and adapt to new practices and evolve our systems and have been doing so for generations. As we move forward, the world will also need to have increased or will have increased demand for alternative protein sources. But with continued investment to keep reducing our environmental footprint and making our consumers and our fellow New Zealanders aware how we care for the land, our cows and our teams, New Zealand is well positioned to continue to grow our reputation as a premium dairy producer in the 21st century. Thank you.